Hey guys, how's it going? Zizig right here once again. And today we got Zelda. It's an old it's an old classic. Oh my gosh. Wonder if this is gonna go over decently. I don't know. Worst comes to worse. We make the let's play, nobody watches it. And I re re release it for you guys. I mean, I'm I'm not opposed to playing it again. <laughs> this is one of the highly requested Zelda games. I don't really know why. Does it live up to the hype? A little bit. Of course, any game is not without its faults, so I don't know. I kind of feel bad because even though I'm all like, oh yeah, I played it so many times, like, I think I remember originally playing it with a guide. So, I mean, take it, take that with it for what you will, but <laughs> that was a really weird saying. I don't even know if that is a saying. It's probably not. So, if you're looking forward to just watching me ramble for like 10 minutes while we get all nostalgic up on this Zelda game, then uh, strap in. Navi, Navi, where art thou? Come hither. Oh, Navi the fairy. Listen to my words, the words of the Deku Tree. Exposition. Dost thou sense it? The climate of evil descending upon our realm. Malevolent forces are now with, are now mastering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long, the Kokiri Forest, the source of life, has stood as a barrier, deterring outsiders and maintaining the order of our world. But before the tremendous evil power. Even my power is nothing. Is an I? I don't know. Seems the time has come for the boy without his fairy to begin his journey. The youth whose destiny it is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Navi, go now. Find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly. The fate of the forest. Nay, the world depends upon thee. So, but I'm wondering, like, is Navi just like a regular fairy? Are all the fairies regular fairies and they just kind of like pick a person and hang out with them? Because you catch fairies in battles throughout the game. And I'm wondering, like, was Navi just hanging around? Like... Because Link spent all this time without a fairy. And... I don't know, it doesn't really make much sense. This cutscene though, oh my gosh. So good! Now we're gonna see how well it controls, how well all this goes. Ziggurat, wake up! The Red Deco Tree wants to talk to you. Ziggurat, get up! Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? Well, of course. Is Link's house adjacent to the wall? Because... I don't know if that... Because it's just like a flat texture behind me, but I don't know if it's supposed to be... I thought there was like a bit of space between the back of his house and the boundary of the area. Let me check that out real quick. Yeah, there's a bit of space there. Ah, uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, that totally doesn't make any sense. Because his house is not adjacent to that. 
Alright, well, screw, screw Saria. It's fine, she doesn't really matter. We're just gonna wander around here, get some stuff. I think one of these gives you stuff for backflips? Uh oh. Oh, that's for thrust attack. Oh no. I have it to switch. Oh, that's like the worst setting. I like to do it in a hold or something. I don't know how you get those. There we go. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to... Okay, so after this episode, I'm totally gonna have to save and quit because this setting that it's at right now is not gonna work for the whole game. I always forget that that's how, the, that's how it's set to start. Oh dear. Okay, so there's two things that we need in order to enter the first dungeon. The first is the Kokiri Sword. The second is the Kokiri Shield. Now the Kokiri Shield costs like, what, 40 bucks? Yeah. But there's like a couple side missions to do. Just like wander around and get stuff, get some mini. Oh, I didn't even get money there. Wonder if I can. Whoop. Oh no! <laughs> These don't give money, do they? I don't think so. But there's like a handful of blue rupees that you can get if you just like wander around the village. Then I think. If you... Oh, there we go. What's this one? Wait, what is it? The graphics are stored. Okay, yeah, so it doesn't. One of these is like do a jump attack, though. I thought. Or is it just backflips? Hmm, I guess not. Oh, gosh. I'm stuck. And then I think rolling gets you a little, a little faster, but I'm not sure. Probably not. I mean, it does. Speedrunners do it, so that must mean it works. We're not going to be speedrunning this. I don't have that kind of coordination. Okay. Yeah, I'm still working to see if this controller works completely. That was one of the problems that I had. As I got older, like one of my controllers stopped working. It's a very sad, very sad thing that happened. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I know how to use a fairy. It's fine. Oh, 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 where is it? There it is. There's a hidden one back there. I found out when I watched somebody play it. <laughs> That's the beauty of watching these Let's Plays. You pick up on so many different techniques. You usually might not even know. And honestly, we're at, we're in the age where, you know, you can just watch a let's play, and that'll give you like all the different techniques that you need. Now, there's a way to get past him, like if you do some kind of crazy. Dodge roll. I might try that later on, but I've never actually been able to do it. Because it's like a really specific action that you need to do. It's like you... When you're crouching, you can like stab your sword. You have to angle it just right so that you like glitch through the person. Like... Oh no. Oh, there we go. Okay. Forgot I had to... I see, like, you ha you have your sword out, and swinging your sword makes you fly backwards. There's a way to clip through somebody, 
clipping is where like your model drifts through the other person. Or through a boundary or something. Like you'll be playing a video game and maybe you'll fall through the floor. That means like you clip through the floor. A little bit of a little bit of lingo for Shoot, I don't even know who's gonna be watching this. I don't know. How old are you? Leave a message in the comments. Great Deku Tree, I'm back. Oh, Nabi, there has returned. So here they're gonna give me the option, like, oh, are you brave? Do you wanna go and help me out? And you have the option to say no, and you can just leave. <laughs> you can't get very far. Unless you use, like, the, the tech, like, the thing where you glitch through the person. Oh. I can just skip all that. I didn't know I could skip a text box. I'm not going to be reading through most of the text just because I assume most of us have already played this and already seen this. Let's be honest, time is short, so we're just going to be run doing a quick run through. We might be able to just clear this first boss, like, I don't know, really quick. Now Navi's gonna give me a whole bunch of exposition. Oh wait. Oh dang it, I was trying to get nuts. I forgot that I had nuts. Or sticks. I don't have nuts yet. So back in these early Zelda games, like, they really didn't know how to do a lot of the stuff yet. Like there was no jump button, so it was just pretty much push forwards. Use the action button. I think Zelda was one of the first games to incorporate an action button. Because in this game, the A button does like almost all the different activities like pushing blocks, scrolling through text, as you can see right now it says next. When you walk up to a door, it says open. It was revolutionary for its time. I mean, Super Mario 64 did the same thing, but instead of hitting a button, you would just open the door by pushing into it. I think... I want to say that Quest 64 did that too, but I'm not sure. You might have had to hit a button. Huh. See, the trick is that you follow up like as soon as it hits him. Yeah. <laughs> There's a common technique. I'm going to be using that one a lot. Which most of the time, you know, you have to jump in a direction anyways in order to jump off of a ledge. So, you're going to be holding forwards anyways. <laughs> oh! Oh no, I messed it up so if you're not overzealous like I am you could probably just um, leave that thing just sitting there instead we're gonna have to do it the intended way did I not skip this oh my goodness Attack scrolls so slowly. That was one of the things that I really disliked about the Zelda games, that a lot of the time, like, the text would just repeat itself a lot. Especially if you've already played it once, it's really noticeable. So this is here. I'm just doing it because I'm a completionist. I always hate having those extra chests on the map. So it's hard for you guys to notice, but the C buttons, which are usually used for camera controls, like in this game, they're used for items and such. Because Zelda's always been about having items and stuff. 
usually it's um I don't know usually I think this was the first game that had like more than two items equipped it at once because yeah before this we what did we have we had the original Zelda which just had one we one item equipped it all the time and then the other one was your sword I don't think you could unequip your sword though in the first game Adventure of Link didn't have any items whatsoever. Uh, Link to the Past had... Well, it had a couple things. But it would pretty much just be the one thing equipped, I think. Yeah, you had the one item box. bothering to get hearts and such. Also curious, can I beat the game without dying? It'd be really embarrassing. I'm just gonna die on like one of the early enemies. That's the thing about Zelda, like even though like you're farther in the game, it gets hard like harder and harder to die. Because by the end of the game you just have so many hearts that it's just like, oh I don't even have to try. Oh wait, I didn't even have to hit this. This doesn't even matter, it's just a compass. I don't need a silly compass. But, I don't know. If you want to hear me ramble on about game design and such... I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you think it's insightful? Does it get annoying? Should we just talk about other things? So that heart is sitting there to kind of tell you like, hey, you should jump out towards that. I don't think we need to use that for reference though, and just... Boom. Okay, that... If, it, if you've never made that jump before, it might take you a couple tries. Do, 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 do. Oh, I don't know what happened. There we go. Oh, I hear so many bugs. It bugs me. Oh, that's right, because there's one like right here. Wait. Oh, there he is. He blends in. So unfortunately, the first, this Ocarina of Time, as awesome as it is, oh, oops, ha, <laughs> the water, as awesome and as revolutionary as it is, it has this flaw where it makes you have to go back and backtrack between dungeons, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. And I'm doing a YouTube things, let's play, so I could totally just um, edit most of the running back and forth out. Yeah. I would say that probably the best way to view these videos is probably going to be like as a companion, like as you're going through the games yourself, and just like, oh, cool, 2, 3, 1. This is one of the one of the big philosophical philosophical uh, things that has followed me throughout my years. Twenty three is number one. And I always used to think though that this one thing looked like a delicious brownie square, like those really those really thick like peanut butter brownies. <laughs> Also, 
I always thought that this one switch, this one switch, it's the only switch in the entire game that you hit underwater. Later on, you have underwater switches. You can't swim into them. But this one switch, the very first switch in the game, it makes no sense. But these are the kind of things that we're going to point out in this Let's Play. And I don't know. I'm like, I feel like I should purposely like leave some things out and be like, Hey guys, if, if you want me to do this, I'll go after this. If you want me to get the Goron Sword, I will. And just like leave that up to you guys to nag on me. Once I get enough people nagging on me, I'll probably do whatever you guys want. In the meantime, I'm just going to try to be talking in a reasonable voice. Because otherwise, like, I don't know. I feel like if I stop talking, I'll... I mean, it, do you end up getting hoarse if you don't talk for too long? It's like you lose your voice. This room has like the only like warning of like what kind of stuff you're gonna fight in here. You can just shoot them, where you're gonna let one of these drop. Ta da! Gamma larva. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's not, not too big of a deal. They're going away when you smack them, so you know that they're not really deadly. Take your seeds. Okay, so here's where the path splits off a little bit. There's this one. It's like really obvious. And then you're like, oh, there's nothing here. It's just a dead end. But no, check this out. See? This is wood. But this, that high-pitched twing sound is supposed to show you that, like, hey, it's, you know, it's bombable. It's a bombable wall. So you're supposed to come here after you get bombs. But the problem is, is that everything in this freaking place is made of wood. So you have no reference of what it sounds like when you smack something. And it like makes the regular sound. It's just I don't know. Just a bunch of little things. I get so many deco nuts, but I'm never gonna use a single one of them. What it does is do it does like this little like flash move, and it like stuns enemies. I've never really found it useful enough to keep it equipped for too long, so... Then as soon as we leave the forest, we're gonna have our third item, so... Alright, now I think you can even... I guess not. Okay, so the order to... Three. Oh, you can't shoot them. Good to know. Then this dude. So I kind of, I kind of picture this dude talking all poncy, like, oh, in order to administer the. Uh, in administer the coup de grace on Queen Gamma. Strike with your sword while she's stunned. Oh, Quiddy? Mm, sorry about that. Mm. He's all like, oh, somebody told you our... Uh, our secret. How very irritating. Okay, so there's a trick in this room where... 
I don't know how you do it. You, like, pick up an item in a bottle, and then, like, you warp out through that front door. That you're not even supposed to be able to do with, like, bomb jumps or something. I don't know. It's really sad, though, because... This guy looks amazing. Or this lady looks amazing. She's really easy. Oh shoot, I just swung with my with my stick. I was supposed to um dang it. I hit the wrong buttons. And it's over before, like, almost as soon as it begins. I mean, there's, like, this whole thing that it, she does. Like, she climbs up on the ceiling and drops eggs and then makes babies and then other stuff happens. But, I mean, you can, you can knock her down one time and take her down, like, right then. But, I don't know. It's just because I've done this so many times, that's all. And by so many times, I mean like five. <laughs> it's not like, it's not like twenty or anything. Well, maybe I don't know ten. How many is enough? That's the question. That's the real question. That's what we're really getting to the bottom of. How many times through the Legend of Zelda is is really necessary? Find out next time. When we go and uh, talk to the, you know, the princess lady. Should I, just, should I just cut this out? I don't know. It's part of the game. I don't know. Do you guys want this extra stuff? There's this whole thing about how there, there's like this fan theory where Link's mom dies and becomes Mido's house, right? <laughs> I don't know. There's way too many Zelda fan, fan theories, honestly. Like there's this part in Wind Waker where you're, there's like this tree that's surrounded by other trees and people are all like, oh, it's just like in, in Ocarina of Time. And I'm just like, you're reaching too far. It's not, <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. They're like, oh, this house looks just like the other house. It's a tree. <laughs> of course it does. Trees look very similar. So this is basically the story of creation, told through the goddesses and all that. Gave the spirit of law to the world. So I'm wondering, by law, do they mean like gravity and stuff? Like what? What do they mean by law? And then her rich soul produced life forms who would uphold the law, like. What is the law supposed to be? I'm kind of confused. Do they do they leave like the, these laws on the Triforce? Is the Triforce like the some kind of a Ten Commandments stone? Huh? What 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 are you guys telling me here? What is the juicy details of this? Don't worry guys, next time I'll, I play this, I'll probably have like a chat thing scrolling so you guys can actually let me know what your thoughts are on all this. In the meantime, we're just going to play through this once just to get it out of the way for right now. I want to say 100 subscribers, we might come back to this.
It depends. It depends on what you guys want. Maybe we could do a yearly playthrough. I don't know. Well, <laughs> I mean, you guys know how to get more people to subscribe to me than I do, because clearly I've been active on this channel for like a year now, and I only have like 30. I know you guys are out there, though. So, yeah. I've got 30 at the time of this recording, so... <laughs> I mean, it might not seem like that now. I mean, right now it's probably like five, fifteen million, but uh. <laughs> I know, guys, right? There was a time when, <laughs> when Zach didn't think that he was gonna be able to pull this through. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Z Ziggurat. If you like this video, please subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out, my hobies.